welcome back to our next captivating tale. Sit back and enjoy the unfolding drama as, once again, a passionate dispute ignited within an apartment nestled among the many unassuming buildings in the neighborhood on a Thursday evening. Elona refused to tolerate her husband's indifference. She launched into a thorough interrogation, and he retaliated as best he could. We're fine. Just tired from work, he replied. Unsatisfied, Alona pressed on. Your job hasn't changed in two years. You weren't this exhausted before. Now suddenly you are. It's winter, it's cold. Not enough vitamin D. Why don't you take the family to the sea for some energy? She suggested. But she received only a familiar expression in response. Her car needed repairs, leaving no time for the sea. That's how it was with him. Everything seemed calm and good. He went to work, came home to a prepared dinner, and the child sat quietly, not attempting to resolve family issues. Frustrated, Alona took her daughter to the bedroom, making sure the door slammed loudly. Honey, go play. Mommy needs to talk to Aunt Mary, she instructed, pointing at the toys. While her daughter happily played with the toys, Alona quickly messaged her friend, we fought again. He doesn't want to listen. He just wants to eat in peace. Are you two fighting again, Alona? He stopped appreciating you. Have you considered doing something about it? What are you going to do? Her friend queried. Maybe go away for a few days. Let him miss you for a change. That's a good idea. Alona pondered the suggestion, but there was a hitch. My daughter has no one to stay with. I can't leave her at home with my husband, who's always busy. What about Lizzie? Can't you take her with you? The friend suggested. Alona molded over. Not a problem. Why should my daughter hinder me from taking a break from my husband? Maybe it's a chance to show him I won't be tied down and suffering. With a plan forming in her mind, Alona declared, Harry, Lizzie and I are going away for two days. I want to take a break with a friend. Harry, taken aback, retorted, a vacation in winter. The weather forecast says it's warm. But what about cooking your own food? I'll buy food at the store. I won't starve, don't worry, Alona reassured him. I'm going with Mary, a former colleague. Harry, seemingly disinterested, muttered, go ahead if you must. Concerned, Alona couldn't shake off her worries. She kept pondering why his reaction was so indifferent, reflecting on their past. Alona reminisced about meeting her husband a decade ago. He was her former best friend's brother and exactly what she desired in a life partner, tall, handsome, and stylish. Their relationship flourished swiftly. Harry lavished her with gifts, took her to exquisite places, and once even flew her to Paris. The memory of their first day in the city, exploring landmarks and enjoying breakfast at a bakery near the Louvre, remained etched in her mind, despite the fact that they had only been dating for six months. Alona had initially considered the trip as just a pleasant weekend getaway, but it became much more significant than that. Will you marry me? Harry asked, producing a black velvet box with a ring from his pocket. Alona, taken aback with surprise and joy, likely screamed a resounding yes. That resonated throughout the hotel. From that moment, their family history commenced, leading to the birth of their daughter and many cherished moments together. However, as years passed, things changed. Harry became increasingly preoccupied with work, distant, and aloof. This shift in behavior saddened Alona. She reasoned with herself, thinking, maybe it's not that bad. He's probably just tired. I should take better care of myself. Perhaps a beautician will help. Conversing with friends and reading numerous women's magazines and articles, Alona learned about the expectations of being a good wife, taking care of oneself, preparing delicious meals, and importantly, not intruding in the evenings. She genuinely tried to meet these expectations, yet their relationship grew colder by the day. On the brink of their trip, Harry unexpectedly hugged Alona while she was setting dinner on plates. 
I've realized things haven't been smooth between us. I've been wrong lately. I'm sorry. Concerned about her daughter, Harry suggested, why don't you extend your stay? We've worked so hard to be able to rest. Get yourself a good room for a week. Elona, surprised, asked, but shouldn't we rest together? Harry explained, there's a lot of work right now, a backlog. We need to earn money for us and our daughter. He pulled Alona close, reassured her, and urged her to stay in touch. That evening, Alona felt an immense sense of relief. The weight in her chest, constantly reminding her of herself, seemed to diminish. She messaged Mary, contemplating, maybe I'm overthinking. We're fine, he's just tired, and so am I. It's typical for long-term couples. Throughout the evening, Alona buzzed around the apartment cheerfully, while her daughter, Lizzie, played quietly. By the door, she packed a large suitcase with summer clothes, creams, and a bathing suit, preparing for her trip. Why do you need such a large suitcase? Inquired Harry as he entered the room. It's just a week off, pretty dresses and blouses. Alona pointed out the portion of the suitcase that only contained Lizzie's belongings. Can you carry it to the terminal and from the airport to the hotel? I thought you were going to walk us to the airport, Alona stared at her husband. Scratching his head, Harry replied, I'll be working. I'll call you a cab. Why should I come to see you off if you're leaving in five minutes to check in anyway? I'd like it if you'd walk me to the terminal. I need help with our daughter and the suitcases. It won't be easy to manage everything at once, Alona insisted. Harry dismissed her request, stating, we'll see in the morning. Maybe I can find a way out of it. I'm the head of the department, I can't just spare an hour for this. Alona retorted, if you can't spare an hour for your family, who are you? Fine, don't bother. I'll manage on my own. Frustrated and unable to contain herself any longer, Alona threw things into the suitcase and expressed her discontent. Harry, fed up with the situation, headed for the kitchen, muttering under his breath. The next morning, Alona, momentarily forgetting the arguments, woke up earlier than usual. Harry was not in bed, and assuming he might be in the kitchen, she went to check on her daughter, who was peacefully asleep. Alona, wearing her robe, searched for Harry in the kitchen, bathroom, and elsewhere, but he was nowhere to be found. Concerned, she called him, frantically asking where he was, only to discover that he was on his way to work. Annoyed, Alona shouted, what job are you at? It's only seven in the morning, and you don't finish until eight. I told you yesterday I'm not going to see you off. Realizing the misunderstanding, Alona cancelled the call, frustrated with her husband's work priorities. As if sensing her mother's frustration, Lizzie woke up and began crying loudly, adding to the chaos. Alona muttered to herself, what's wrong with you, Harry? The day seemed ruined from the start. Alona hadn't expected sudden passionate affection from her husband, which he hadn't shown in years. However, what she hadn't anticipated was his blatant disregard for the family, displayed so overtly. The following hour raced by for Alona. With one hand, she rocked her daughter while hailing a cab to the airport with the other. Once downstairs, she arranged her suitcases and completed the final preparations for the journey. Airport, the driver asked as Alona got into the car. Yes, and if possible, could you please hurry? Packing with my daughter wasn't easy, Alona requested. I won't break any rules, ma'am, the driver assured her. Grateful for the assistance, Alona sighed with relief. Thank you. I'm not asking you to break any rules, my daughter is in the car. The driver glanced at Alona through the mirror. My husband doesn't help me, he left for work early without offering assistance. He's a bad husband. I always help my wife, bring groceries, and assist with airport runs. But I suppose you love your husband, and he doesn't reciprocate, the cab driver remarked. I don't think so, Alona replied after a brief pause. We've been together for too long. Maybe it's a challenging time for him, or maybe for me. Reflecting on it, 
Alona realized that perhaps Harry was doing just fine, and it was her own worries that troubled her. Arriving at the crowded airport, the driver assisted her with unloading before swiftly departing. Alona settled her daughter and began maneuvering her suitcases toward the check-in area. Messaging Mary about her arrival, she spotted her friend at check-in window 12, carrying only a small backpack. Why such a small bag? Alona asked. Mary explained it contained essentials like a swimsuit, shorts, and t-shirts. Offering to help with the suitcase, Mary remarked on Alona's hectic morning with Lizzie crying and Harry refusing to assist. Do you want the truth? Mary queried. A year ago, he used to carry you both. He isn't now, is he? Shaking her head in disbelief, Alona replied, no, that's not true. However, Mary expressed doubts about Harry's behavior, suggesting he might not be paying much attention to his daughter. I don't want to believe it, Alona protested. He's just tired. He's always working on unfinished projects. Smiling, Alona said, men talk a lot, painting beautiful pictures. Not something you want to think about right now, Mary noted as they approached the check-in counter. Alona handed over her passport and confirmed her luggage. Your luggage? Asked the receptionist. Yes, it's here, Alona confirmed, but Mary intervened, placing the suitcase on the belt herself. Let me help. After all, we're on vacation. Alona smiled. The receptionist swiftly printed boarding passes for Alona and Mary, who quickly checked in and proceeded to the waiting area, realizing they had an hour and a half to spare. I suggest we sit in a coffee shop, Alona suggested, her face glowing with excitement for coffee and dessert. They found a relatively quiet coffee shop where Alona settled into a chair, beaming at her daughter. After perusing the menu, she ordered coffee and dessert, while Mary opted for tea and Napoleon. As their orders were taken, Mary inquired about what was happening between Alona and Harry. Shaking her head in confusion, Alona admitted, I honestly don't understand. It was so different a couple of years ago, even a year ago. He was kind, attentive, showered me with gifts. We traveled, bought a home and a car together. But now. He's different, Mary finished for her. It's strange that he's distant, not just from you but from Lizzie too. His reaction to the trip is worrying. It's one thing to be tired, but not wanting to spend time with family is odd, Mary remarked, concerned. Are you sure he wasn't relieved you were leaving? I don't think so, Alona responded. Though he might be glad to avoid talking to me for a whole week. I just hope he misses me, and we can mend things. Their drinks and desserts arrived, prompting Mary to suggest they finish quickly to avoid missing their flight. Let's not dwell on Harry and just enjoy our vacation, Mary encouraged, trying to uplift the mood. The flight went smoothly as Lizzie slept, and Alona looked out the window, trying to distract herself with music and the city views upon arrival. Wow, it feels like summer here. Mary marveled as they stepped outside, shedding their jackets. Deciding to grab a cab and head to the hotel, Alona marveled at the sunny weather, palm trees, and the stunning view of the sea. I don't even feel like being sad, Alona remarked, amazed at the beauty around her. The hotel rooms matched the pictures, featuring a stylish and modern design, complemented by a luxurious lobby. The friendly receptionist efficiently provided guest cards and guided them to the elevator. Beside the elevator, a large mirror reflected Alona's full-length image. Observing herself, she thought, I've really let myself go. My legs and hair need attention. I should visit the hairdresser, I used to take better care of myself. Alona suggested to Mary, let's find a hairdresser first, touch up, and maybe trim the ends. Great idea. We can go out tonight. I'll entertain Lizzie while you're at the salon, Mary agreed. Entering the luxurious hotel room, Alona was delighted to find two rooms, one for her and one for Mary. The room boasted a large table, a beautiful green velvet armchair, and, most importantly, a massive window overlooking the sea. Overjoyed, Alona exclaimed, I'm thrilled. 
Opening the windows, she welcomed the sea breeze into the room, expressing her happiness. Mary echoed her sentiments, I'm delighted too. Elona busied herself arranging things in closets and dressers. Can you take care of Lizzie? I'll get changed, and we can go for a walk, she proposed. Lizzie's laughter and clapping seemed like a positive response to the idea. The first day of their vacation felt like a continuation of their home life. However, the second day felt like the start of a new chapter. Mary led Alona to various interesting places. They started by picking out a beautiful discounted beige dress at a local store. Alona, slightly sarcastic, commented, looks great. Let's head to the hairdresser now. En route to the salon, they strolled along the main street and pedestrian avenue by the sea. Alona admired the surroundings, enjoying not just the sea and houses but also the diverse and stylish individuals, appreciating their efforts to maintain a fashionable appearance. Arriving at the barber shop, Mary dragged her inside. Alona expressed her desire for a braid and briefly contemplated a subtle highlight, intending to consult the hairdresser's opinion. Upon entering the salon, Alona noticed a blend of floral scents, hairspray, and hair dye. A short girl in a black apron greeted them. How can I help you? Asked the hairstylist as Alona expressed her desire for a haircut and to address the yellowing of her hair. The hairstylist, attentive to Alona's request, gestured toward the chair, assuring her, everything will be taken care of. Please, take a seat. I'll stay here with the little one, Mary offered, settling into a chair while holding Lizzie. As Alona sat in the chair, holding Lizzie, the hour flew by swiftly. When she glimpsed herself in the mirror, she saw a rejuvenated version of her old self, a beautifully groomed woman with bright, lively eyes. Pleased with the result, Alona thanked the hairstylist and took some selfies, contemplating sending one to her husband. She grew anxious at the thought but eventually decided to share it with him. How did it go? Mary inquired as Alona emerged. It's gorgeous, suits you perfectly. Let's go and flaunt it, Mary suggested. The day drew to a close as dusk settled over the city. Alona and Mary strolled along the promenade, observing the cityscape, including the tall spire of the train station visible in the distance. Exhausted from the day's activities, Alona proposed heading back to the hotel. Let's relax in the room and order some food, Alona suggested. Tomorrow's going to be packed. Back at the hotel, Alona put Lizzie to bed and quietly retreated to the other room. Mary remarked on the challenge of putting a child to sleep, acknowledging the difficulty of parenting. I'm thinking of ordering champagne, Alona pondered aloud, but hesitated, mindful of being on vacation with her responsibilities. You can have a drink if you want, she said to Mary. Unsure, Alona declined, opting for tea while Mary decided on wine and snacks. Moments later, a waiter dressed in black appeared at the door, signaling the start of their vacation evening. May I take your order, thank you. The waiter inquired as Mary wheeled the cart into the room and began arranging plates and cups on the table. Is there anything else you need? Asked the waiter. Mary jokingly replied, yes, good company, causing the waiter to feel slightly embarrassed before excusing himself and leaving the room. Watching Mary indulging in multiple drinks, Alona grew tense, worried about her friend's increasing inebriation. After Mary's third drink, Alona suggested, maybe that's enough. Expressing concern. I'm not going anywhere with Lizzie asleep, Alona emphasized as Mary mentioned going out for the night. Despite Mary's disappointment, she dressed up and left, intending to enjoy the nightlife. Alone in the room, Alona checked her phone, finding no messages or calls. Concerned about Mary's whereabouts, especially when she didn't return by three or four in the morning, Alona contemplated calling her but refrained from doing so. Shortly afterward, Mary sent a picture with an unknown man. Concerned, Alona asked about him, cautioning Mary not to bring him to their room. Responding immediately, Mary reassured Alona about the man and playfully called her a coward, affirming that they wouldn't let him into the hotel without Alona's approval. Suddenly, Lizzie started whimpering, 
prompting Ilona to attend to her daughter, who seemed to be awake and distressed. After comforting and soothing Lizzie back to sleep, Ilona lay down next to her, awaiting Mary's return. As the sunlight streamed through the windows, indicating a new day, Ilona woke up. She checked on her still sleeping daughter, noticing her movements in slumber, and smiled at her antics. Preparing coffee in the kitchen area, Ilona heard a knock on the door and found her friend, tired but content, standing outside. Mary had returned, holding her shoes in hand after a night out. Hello, did you sleep well? Asked Ilona. Not really, replied Ilona. I was worried about you. You didn't have to be, I'm fine, Mary assured her while noticing the aroma of coffee. Oh, it's coffee. It smells wonderful. Can I have a cup? Sure, I made just enough for two, Ilona said as Mary, showing signs of fatigue, settled onto a high stool at the bar counter and took a sip. You have no idea who I met. Now I'll tell you everything, Mary exclaimed, but Ilona urged her not to shout as Lizzie was still asleep. Mary then narrated her encounter with a man at a popular local bar, emphasizing his charm and interesting profession as a director. If he's a good guy, I'm happy for you, Ilona smiled. But don't rush to conclusions about him on the first day of meeting him. I'm not in a hurry, Mary responded enthusiastically, detailing how attentive and considerate he seemed, drawing parallels to Ilona's early days with Harry. Really? Where are we going? Ilona inquired. Mary explained she suggested Max bring his friend and they all have dinner together, assuring that Lizzie was welcome too. Ilona expressed hesitancy about meeting someone new, emphasizing her commitment to her marriage, but Mary insisted on expanding their social circle without any commitments. Mary brought up concerns about Harry's behavior, asking if Ilona had checked his phone for any signs of infidelity. Ilona defended Harry, stating she hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Perhaps the spark between us has died out, we'll have to rekindle it somehow, Ilona pondered. But Mary, with a serious tone, remarked on Ilona's worth and Harry's lack of appreciation, suggesting they go out to eat to widen their social connections. You don't have to go out with anyone or even exchange numbers. It's just expanding our social circle, it can be helpful, Mary suggested earnestly. Okay, but what am I going to wear? Not the same fishnet dress we bought yesterday, it's nice, but it's more suitable for the beach, not a restaurant. I don't care if you wear a sweater and tights. I can lend you a dress I have, it's blue. Let's try it on. The dress fit perfectly, as if it had been made for her. Ilona looked at herself in the mirror and couldn't help but smile. Her face revealed a slight blush. Yes, a bit of rest, a trip to the hairdresser, and shopping can really work wonders. Ilona took out her makeup from the suitcase and lightly enhanced her eyelashes. Suddenly, she received a message on her phone. Hi, how are you doing? Have you finally decided? Read Ilona and quickly dialed. Everything is fine. I'm going for a walk. You'll be there until Sunday, won't you? Yes, I fly in on Sunday at 4 in the afternoon, replied the other person. Why? Nothing. I'll see what I'm doing, maybe I'll meet you, how's that? Ilona answered. Mary entered the room and admired her friend, wow, that looks really good on you. Why don't you put on some lipstick? No, this is fine, Ilona replied. Shall we go to the beach? The day passed happily and quietly, Ilona and Lizzie enjoyed swimming in the sea and lounging on the beach under a large umbrella. Harry was no longer making himself known, leaving Ilona in doubt about whether going to this dinner was the right decision. Why are you so worried? Mary asked her. It's just dinner and small talk in a restaurant full of people. Do you think my husband has never been to one? I guess you're right, Ilona agreed. Just promise me we won't go anywhere afterward, to any beaches, hotels, or even worse, homes. Of course not. Mary reassured her. I wouldn't dream of suggesting that. All right, let's give it a try. It might be fun, you won't regret it. 
As the sun set over the horizon, Alona, Lizzie, and Mary returned to the hotel to change. Getting ready went smoothly, Alona wore the same blue dress, and her daughter picked out a beautiful beige jumpsuit. Mary, however, outdid herself and chose a bright red dress. Wow, too beautiful and brave, Alona admired. Thank you for the compliment. Mary jumped up and down in joy. It was exactly the effect I wanted. Well, the cab is waiting for us, let's go. The restaurant was right on the beach in the most beautiful spot, offering a view of the mountains. It was illuminated by lights everywhere, creating a vibrant atmosphere. Mary took Alona's hand and pulled her inside, looking around the tables for her new acquaintance. Finally spotting him, she waved. Hi. Glad you guys could make it. I picked a table by the window, Max said, standing up and rushing to meet them. Hi, Mary smiled coquettishly. What a nice place. And this is Alona and Lizzie. Nice to meet you, Alona introduced herself and her daughter. Hi, Lizzie, Max greeted Lizzie and then turned to the table. And this is Victor, my friend, Max said as Alona waved awkwardly and took her seat, placing Lizzie in her chair. Do you mind if we use first names? Max asked. Nothing, Mary said. Alona didn't really want to go out yesterday, but she agreed today. How do you like it here? Max inquired. It's a nice place to relax and unwind, Victor added. I agree, Mary nodded. I haven't been here long myself, but it's a good place to rest. Where are you from? Mary asked. I'm from Washington, D.C. Well, you and Alona are probably from the same city, aren't you? Victor replied. Yes, we're from New York, Alona confirmed, scanning through the menu. Oh, let's order something, Victor suggested. I was here last week, and the food is very good. The steak was especially well cooked. Will you have the steak, Alona? Mary opened the menu and flipped through a few pages. You like meat, don't you? Yes, I think so, Alona smiled. And some tea, please. Tea it is, Victor replied. Coffee for me. Why is everyone so serious? Max laughed. Though I'd take coffee too, otherwise, I'm driving. I'll have the rolls, Mary looked at Max. California. When the food choices were done, casual conversation ensued. Max talked about how he had moved here five years ago because he was tired of the cold winter. Alona noticed how Mary was looking at him with shining eyes and immediately understood. It looked like her friend had fallen in love. Aren't you planning on moving out? Mary asked, turning to Victor. No, I have a lot of business in the capital. Everything is tied up, I can't work remotely, Victor replied. And what do you do with your life? I'm on maternity leave, Alona pointed at her daughter, who was happily kicking a toy on a child's chair kindly given by the waiter. Actually, I'm a florist. Wow, that's great. Do you want to go back to work? Mary inquired. I would, of course, as soon as Lizzie's two years old. We'll think about daycare in the meantime. I'm doing the best I can, Alona replied. The evening turned out to be interesting. Alona relaxed and rejoiced every time Max put his arm around Mary's shoulders or just looked at her. Her friend deserved happiness. For too long, nothing had worked out, and Max seemed like a good man. After a couple of hours, dinner was over, and Victor called a cab to the hotel for Alona and Mary to get there without any adventures. See you tomorrow, Max asked quietly, leading Mary away. She glowed and nodded. Of course, we'll talk to each other. Alona wanted to get in the car, but suddenly Victor gently took her hand. It was nice to meet you, and your daughter is very nice, Victor said. Thank you, Alona smiled. It's nice to meet you too. Without waiting for further conversation, Alona pulled out her hand, put her daughter in the car, and got in herself. Mary walked around the car and sat in the front seat. Well, shall we go? 
Okay, Elona said, turning on the ignition. Let's go. As soon as they arrived at the hotel and went up to the room, Mary pestered Elona with questions. How are they? How are Max and Victor? They look great to me. You and Max look good together. But how do you want to go out with him if we're going away soon? Mary got sad. I haven't told you about that yet, and I don't know anything myself. I'm just thinking about it. Anyway, I want to stay here for at least a month, then we'll see," Elona said. Mary stared at her friend with surprise. Wow, and you didn't hurry to tell me that. And where will you live? First, I'll rent an apartment, and then maybe Max will offer to move in with him. And if he doesn't, what's the big deal? What do you think of Victor? Mary asked. I told you, he's a nice guy, but I'm not interested in him at all. I'm married, Mary, Alona replied firmly. Still, I wouldn't cut him off if he tried to write. Your Harry's a bit hairy, he's just about to give something away, like what? Mary prodded. Never mind. I'm just saying. But Victor really likes you. I don't care. Once again, Mary, don't set me up with anyone. If I wanted a lover, I'd tell you about it. I hope the vacations will do their work, and Harry and I can have a proper talk. We do have a daughter together, after all. We'll have to live together somehow, Elona said firmly. Suit yourself, said Mary as she went to her room. But I gave Victor your number. What? Elona barked so loudly at her friend that Lizzie flinched in surprise and dropped the toy she was holding. I'm sorry to see you in such a state. I can understand your frustration. Daughter, why did you do it? Elona asked Mary, feeling exhausted. Oh, stop it. That's it. I'm very tired. I'm going to bed, Mary responded abruptly. He won't write to you. You didn't even say goodbye to him. It's okay, forget it. Good night, Mary closed the door behind her, leaving Elona seething with indignation. Taking her daughter in her arms, Alona sighed, it's time for you to go to bed, honey. Lizzie shook her head, indicating she wasn't hungry. Alona noticed her daughter looked tired. She placed her on the bed, lying down next to her. What was she even thinking? Alona continued to get upset, feeling frustrated with herself as well. Why did she even go there and let herself be talked into it? What will happen if Harry finds out that I'm here on vacation, going to all kinds of cafes with men? He's working there, earning US money. What about me? Making a firm promise to herself not to engage in such situations again, Alona closed her eyes and let fatigue overtake her. Sleep took over almost instantly, but a few hours later, Alona was jolted awake by her daughter's screams. She turned on the light to find Lizzie all red. Panicked, she rushed to the suitcase, searching for the first aid kit, specifically the thermometer. Taking Lizzie's temperature, she noticed it wasn't too high, but the allergies had returned, likely due to the local flora and fauna. However, there was a problem, the medicine that usually helped was left at home. Alona grabbed Lizzie and rushed to the front desk. Good morning. My daughter has allergies. Can you tell me where the nearest pharmacy is? Elona asked anxiously. Hi, there's one a block away. Is there anything we can do? What's wrong? Should we call an ambulance? The staff inquired with concern. No, I just need to go to the pharmacy. It's happened before. All I need are the pills, Elona responded quickly. If you don't need an ambulance, just give me a minute. A member of our staff will take you to the pharmacy, the attendant assured. A tall staff member in a suit appeared and offered to accompany them. Unfortunately, after visiting multiple drugstores, it turned out none of them had the necessary medicine. Shouldn't we call a doctor? Even if it's not too dangerous for her, have the doctors give her the right medicine, suggested the attendant. Alona agreed, and they hurried back to the hotel. The ambulance arrived swiftly, providing the necessary medication. The doctor advised, 
my recommendation is to go home as soon as possible and have a course of treatment away from everything blooming. The girl was already looking much better, but Ilona wasn't going to delay. She returned to the room and encountered a bewildered Mary. Quickly, she described the situation. I'll pack your things, panicked Mary, and you get your ticket. We'll go to the airport now, and you'll be home in three or four hours. The flight went smoothly. Lizzie was asleep in her chair, allowing Ilona to finally calm down. She occasionally glanced at her daughter while leafing through a magazine. Upon landing, Ilona hailed a cab and hurried home, deeply worried for her daughter. She hadn't even considered informing her husband about her return in the midst of the turmoil. It wasn't until she reached home that she remembered she hadn't notified him. It was only four o'clock, and he was likely at work. She decided to send him a message, urging him to call the clinic and make an appointment for Lizzie. Stepping into the elevator and pressing the button for the right floor, Alona was surprised when she arrived at her apartment door. A fragrant smell of baked goods greeted her. Perplexed, she unlocked the door and, without changing, walked toward the living room. To her shock, Harry was at home, and he wasn't alone. What on earth? Alona tripped over a woman's sneakers, the realization hitting her slowly. It was only when Harry, half-dressed, rushed over to her, followed by a young girl in a silk blue robe, that it all sank in. Ouch, muttered the young woman as she noticed Alona near the entrance. Harry's face expressed a mix of surprise and anger. Why did you come today? Harry turned to the woman and then said to Alona, will you please come into the room? I'll take care of it. Alona pushed her husband away and entered the room, setting Lizzie down in a chair. Then, she turned around and exclaimed, what the hell is going on here? Are you out of your mind bringing this date into our house, into my house? What's your house? Harry responded in a surprised tone. Is this your house? I thought it was mine. I bought it with my own money. Have you forgotten already? Alona was speechless, sitting on the edge of the couch, staring into the void, hoping it was all just a stupid dream. She hoped she hadn't drifted off yet after hours of strolling along the promenade. Alona rubbed her hands together, pinched herself, realizing with despair that it was all true, the awful truth. And yet, Mary had warned her that something wasn't right. Why hadn't she believed Mary? Why did she hold on to the belief that she and her husband could still work things out? Okay, Elona spoke with difficulty, if that's the case, go away. I don't know what you were planning to do, but leave. Harry closed the door and approached her, speaking softly but with an audible tone. No, you can't kick me out of my apartment. Understand? I've consulted experts, this apartment is a hundred percent mine. So, you'll be packing up. If you want to come back early and ruin it, you pack up right now. What are you going to ruin, actually? Elona asked. Lizzie got sick, her allergies are acting up, so we got here early. You know that. How long have you been lying to me like this? Ignoring her question, Harry was more concerned about something else. Take Lizzie and go. I'll get custody later in court, and we'll decide what days I can take her in. That's all there is to it. There's nothing more to discuss. What are you sitting there for? Get ready. I'm not going anywhere. My daughter's sick, she needs to see a doctor. It's evening outside. Where do we go now? Elona challenged. What is she sick with? Harry glanced at his daughter. There she sits, smiling. Look at her face and hands. I'm not looking anywhere. Don't you dare manipulate that child. I won't let you. That's it. I told you, if you're still here in half an hour, I'll give you a hard time. Go to hell. Shouted Alona and walked out into the hallway, where the suitcase was placed. Harry's mistress, also present, decided to join the confrontation. Actually, it was your own fault. You didn't pay any attention to him at all. You forgot he was a man. Elona couldn't take it anymore. How old are you anyway? 
you're going to tell me what to do. You think you can live with Harry in peace? No, I won't give you a quiet life. Taking her daughter in her arms, Alona rolled the suitcase into the stairwell. Behind her echoed the disgruntled cries of the offended mistress. Alona hurried away to the elevator, and Harry slammed the door loudly. In the silence of the entryway, Alona could clearly hear their conversation. Harry attempted to convince his mistress that it would never happen again, and Alona was no longer an obstacle. Furious, she resolved to be a liability, making it impossible for Harry to have peace. What do we do now? Where do we go? Alona wondered aloud. Mary hadn't returned yet, and she couldn't think of another friend with a small child in a one-room apartment. You can't go to their place, her parents are in another city, Alona muttered to herself as she stepped outside and settled onto a nearby bench. She dialed her friend Mary's number, but Mary's response was barely audible over the background music. Get out of the way and find someplace quiet, Alona shouted as she struggled to hear. Mary eventually responded, what's going on? Is it Lizzie? How was your flight? No, it's not about Lizzie, Alona explained, detailing the unsettling encounter with Harry. Mary was shocked into silence, struggling to find the right words before she eventually blurted out, but where are you going? Why did you even leave? It was your house too. I couldn't stay there with them, Alona replied, and Lizzie was distressed by the commotion. Harry even mentioned that the apartment wasn't mine, that he consulted specialists about it. Here's the thing, Mary interjected, you have a minor child. You need to write a statement. I'll find you a place to sleep. I'll call you back as soon as I secure something. I'm not going anywhere, I'm tired. Lizzie needs her medication, which I forgot. I'll just stay here on the bench, Alona insisted. Wait for me, I'll book you a hotel room and arrange a cab. You're at your house, right? A car will be there shortly, Mary assured her. Alona waited, unsure of how much time passed before the doorbell rang. She answered the phone, whispering, I'm listening. A cab is coming, get in. The driver will take you to the hotel. Do you have your passport? Great, so there won't be any problems checking in. You'll have a room for a week to gather your thoughts, then figure out your next steps. You understand? Mary explained. Yes, I understand. Thank you for your support, Mary. I wasn't expecting it, Alona expressed gratefully. Don't worry, it'll be all right. You'll see, Mary reassured her. No, it's not going to be okay. Alona protested. Yes, it will be. It'll be even better, Harry will regret everything, but by then, it'll be too late, Mary insisted. I'll join you at your place tomorrow. Max will be fine without me for a few days, and you need the support. Alona's emotions surged, and she rushed around the room in a fit of anger, hurling the harshest words at her husband, realizing the extent of his betrayal. That was it, wasn't it? How long had he been with that young woman? He doesn't want his daughter, neither does his wife, she fumed. How could he decide to get his own apartment? It's not going to work. We should go to a lawyer, his daughter won't be left on the street, Alona said firmly, despite her daughter feeling better after getting the right medicine from the pharmacy that replaced what was left at home. Lizzie was now enthusiastically playing with her toys, her occasional joyful laughter filling the room. Suddenly, the phone started ringing. It was a message from her husband. Come tomorrow to the address I have below. It's my lawyer. We need to solve all the issues with the finances and the apartment. Don't count on you and the baby to take everything away from me. I'm not stupid. You can't do that. I'll be waiting in my lawyer's office at 10 o'clock. Alona muttered to herself, you won't make it. She forwarded the message to Mary, who promptly responded, I am already at the airport. We're on the bus about to board. I'll be there soon. You're not going to any lawyer on your own. Don't even think about it. That's another thing he came up with. He doesn't even think about his daughter. But we'll show him. 
and I'm leaving in a few more minutes. Don't worry about it. Although I know you're in shock right now, but it'll all work out. I'll be at your hotel soon. Wait for me. I kiss and hug you. Hang in there. A few hours later, Mary was sitting at a table in the hotel room, comforting a crying Elona as best as she could. Elona lamented, it was obvious. He stayed late at work and sometimes left on weekends, saying that an urgent project had come up. And the way he talked to me. Why didn't I notice everything? No one wants to believe a bad thing, Mary consoled her. Do you think I wasn't so wrong? Think of Nick alone. He was an even tougher skeptic. There's only one bad thing, that you have to live somewhere. And please don't be a fool. Don't give in to him. You've got to have it all, you and your daughter. You still need a place to live. Yes, but he explicitly said that I could not even count on it. Did you sign anything on the paperwork? Maybe he's got some kind of thing going on there. What's going on with your apartment anyway? Who owns it? It's complicated, Alona hesitated. His mom bought it and gave it to him. What do you mean, his mother? Mary questioned, seeking clarification. Didn't you buy it before Lizzie was born? Mary questioned. Yes, but he made it up as he went along. I was so silly and naive. I didn't even think of objecting, replied Alona. Mary stood up abruptly and gestured wildly. What are you saying? That he's going to take it all for himself? Like hell he will. You're registered there. No, Lizzie's registered with my parents. He kept promising he'd get her registered, but he never got around to it. We had an argument or something, Alona explained sadly, shaking her head. Well, here's the result, girlfriend. Are you crazy or something? Mary exclaimed with disbelief. Elona nodded sadly. Now I don't even know how I could have let that happen. Mary sat down, then suddenly jumped up in her chair again, unable to calm down. It's just nonsense. I'm going to write to Max. I think he has a lawyer friend. No, it's not Victor, it's another friend. Maybe he can give me some advice. Don't do that, Alona objected. Why? He wants to defend that bastard. Mary retorted. No, I don't. You've got to get everything you can out of him, Alona clarified, acknowledging the difficulty of the situation. The following day, Alona dressed in her black suit, an item she had brought on vacation for some reason and it stayed in her suitcase. She styled her hair in a high ponytail and picked up her daughter. Mary met her on her way out of the hotel, also dressed in a businesslike manner, accompanied by a man Alona didn't know. Hi, this is Gerard. He's a lawyer. Now let's go. Harry was already waiting in the office and was taken aback when they entered with a lawyer. He looked at his wife with a disgruntled expression, questioning, who the hell is that? It's the lawyer, Alona said confidently. Why? Why did you bring your daughter here? You think you can get something through her? Harry argued. I don't think anything. I had no one to leave her with, but here we go. What did you want to tell me? Elona retorted. The lawyer, a tall blonde woman in a tight skirt, smirked before reading out the documents. So, let's begin. From Harry's side to you, Elona, there is the following offer. He offers you $400 for the first time and pays monthly alimony to support his daughter, also $400. Elona jumped out of her chair in disbelief. Are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind, Harry? I know for a fact that we had at least 300000 in our accounts, and by the way, some of it was mine. What's yours? What 300000 Are you out of your mind? It's not yours. You spent it all while you stayed home and didn't work, and on vacation. What money did you use to go on vacation? Harry retorted. Elona stood her ground, rejecting his claims. Sit down and think about it. I don't think so. I'll apply for you. Wait, Elona, the
the lawyer intervened, extending a hand to Harry and pointing to a folder of documents. I have requested from you the certificate of ownership of the apartment and all the other documents related to the property, and I'll be preparing a lawsuit for court division of property, determination of joint custody, and, of course, child support, the lawyer stated. What kind of lawyer have you brought in here? Harry barked. I've got some bad news for you. He's not thinking straight. What kind of documents am I supposed to give you? Here's a piece of paper you can wipe your face with. No insults, Gerard replied calmly. Mary looked at her friend, then at Harry, but Alona couldn't look at anyone and just stared at the floor. We could not accept your proposals and will file papers in court. Await an invitation to the hearing. That will be all, Alona, you can go now, said the lawyer. Four hundred dollars would even be a lot for you. Shouted Harry in the back. If you don't take it, you won't get anything at all. Don't even think about it. You're half, but you're a naive idiot. Mary tugged Alona by the sleeve, urging her to leave. A spring breeze was blowing outside. Alona stopped in the parking lot to breathe in the fresh air. In that office, she felt as if there was nothing to breathe at all, and she was about to suffocate. Alona picked up her daughter and held her close. Don't worry, honey. It's going to be all right, she assured. Gerard came closer. We have to talk about the whole situation. Let's sit down somewhere. Alona looked around. There are some benches over there. Let's go. We need to work out a strategy. I suggest we draw up a petition and go to court. Do you, Elona, want to raise your daughter on your own? Of course, I do. Do you think I can give her everything I want just to get my share? Elona replied. We bought the apartment a year after we were married, and we wanted our child to have it. And of course, we were saving up. Yeah, I was on maternity leave for the last year, but we talked about it. It wasn't just me who wanted it, it was him too, Elona explained. Unfortunately, agreements are just words, the documents are the proof. How did it happen that your husband signed everything over to himself? Gerard inquired. I didn't follow up on it, and I trusted him. I never thought it would turn out like this, Elona expressed with regret. Unfortunately, it does happen. I have to tell you the truth. If it's legitimate, it's going to be very difficult to get anything for you. But I guarantee we'll file for child support and we'll try to get to the truth, Gerard assured. Thank you. I know I trusted it myself. I can't even believe it. I just wish I could take it back, Alona lamented. You can't go back, but you have a future, Mary pointed out. Everything is going to be all right, she said, looking at the lawyer. Thank you for your work, Gerard nodded and left. Elona and Mary decided to return to the room to put Lizzie to bed. The hotel is only for a week. What would I do after that? The thought troubled Elona. Fine with me, but Lizzie, you could get a part-time job picking brocades at home. Think about it. What home if you don't have a house? But you could rent. Yeah, I know it sounds awful, but you have to do something. Anyway, you can't stay in a hotel for too long. You have to move somewhere, Mary suggested. I'll think about it later, Alona replied. Maybe you should see a psychologist. So many things piled up at once. I do not even know how I would cope in such a situation. I don't know, maybe. But not now. I've got things to do, Mary said. Okay, well then, we need a distraction today. Why don't we get some chips and popcorn and watch some sappy melodrama? I can't get enough sappy melodrama right now. I wouldn't mind watching a horror movie, Mary suggested. Well, come on then, Mary stopped and slapped her forehead. What's the matter? Alona didn't understand. I've been thinking. I'm going away for six months, at least six months. You can stay at my place just for the rent for the time being. It's much better than renting from someone for the first month. You don't even need to pay the rent. 
The main thing is that you get settled and settle down, Mary offered. This is too much, Mary. You could rent it out at full price. I'll do it later, Alona said, surprised by the generous offer. But you can stay with me for six months, and then we'll see, Mary suggested. The surprise made Alona cry in the store where they had gone to pick out snacks for the evening. What's wrong? Mary hugged her friend. Don't worry. We'll show him yet, she reassured Alona. Alona smiled, weakly wiped her eyes, and threw a couple of packets of popcorn and baby juice in the basket. Let's go watch a movie. We need a distraction, otherwise, my brain is going to burst with stress. The next day, Alona received a message from Gerard. Good afternoon, Alona. The news is not good. Your husband's paperwork is very devious. I'm afraid it won't be possible to get his share. The contract has your signature with a waiver of any claims, and the apartment was received by deed of gift. All you can do is file for divorce and alimony. Mary ran up to her friend after reading the message. Look, after reading the message, Mary stood with her lips pressed together, gloomily looking at her friend. I don't know what to say. When you manage to sign a waiver, I can't understand it, Mary expressed her confusion. He said something about it being easier to process, Alona said. It seemed to Alona that everything that was happening was not true. It was just a very bad dream, and she was bound to wake up. Reality invaded that dream in the form of a text message. Are you happy now? So she takes her $400 and runs, and from now on, that's it. Don't even think about calling me, don't interfere with my life, Alona firmly responded. What about your daughter? Mary asked. The court will set a schedule. I'll take her to my place. That's great, isn't it? So, I will raise her, take her to kindergarten, feed her, dress her, and do her homework with her. He will take her for a couple of weekends. That's awesome. What a bastard. Why don't we try to make it so he can't see her? Why would the baby need a daddy like that? Mary suggested. It's not Lizzie's fault, and he's her daddy, Alona replied. But somehow, I don't think he'll take her. His mistress is not likely to want to babysit her, and I wouldn't trust her with my daughter, which means he'd have to kick her out. I don't think he's gonna do that. I don't think he would, Mary agreed. This is getting funnier by the minute. Can I stay with you? Of course, you can, as long as it takes. I wanted to leave in a week. Can you bring your things? I don't have much here. I keep everything in a suitcase in the pantry, Mary replied. Thank you, Alona shook her friend's hand. You're a lifesaver. You would have been fine on your own, but why when you can make life easier? Never mind. I hate him, Mary expressed. I know what you mean, Alona said, and they hugged each other. The days flew by in a hectic rush, dealing with paperwork, applications, and taking care of Lizzie. Alona felt overwhelmed at times, waiting for her daughter to fall asleep while sobbing in her chair for hours. However, amid the challenges, there were moments of hope. A month had passed since Alona had returned home, and she started feeling a bit better. She moved all her and her daughter's things into Mary's apartment and managed to create a sense of home comfort, essential for both of them. Difficult days arrived when she had to go to court to sign papers and agreements, feeling like a little girl who had made a huge mistake. Finally, when all the litigation was over, her ex-husband owed only child support. Though the amount wasn't much, it was enough to sustain herself and her daughter as she started looking for work. I will spend more on the nanny than I earn," Alona lamented in a message to Mary. What's the point? I'd rather save money and think of something else. Maybe even try to save a little," Alona contemplated. One evening, she had the very idea she'd been waiting for. She quickly grabbed the phone and dialed her friend Mary. What if I don't go to work and pick up the brocades myself? You said something about that, but I didn't know how to do it. Now, I like the idea. I can buy some flowers, assemble different bouquets, 
take pictures for social media. What if someone buys them? Elona suggested. That's exactly what I was talking about. And you wouldn't need a babysitter. You have a refrigerator, plenty of room for food and bouquets. Then I'll start right away. I haven't managed to save much, but it's enough, Elona explained. It might not work, Mary remarked, but at least you'll know you tried. That's very important. And by the way, I've got news, Mary continued. Max asked me to move in with him. Can you imagine? I myself haven't even hinted. Yay, that's great. Congratulations, Mary. May everything work out perfectly for you, just as it will for you when you start picking bouquets, Alona replied. I'm going to the store right now to get some flowers. Don't forget to send a picture. Good luck. Alona used to love her job even before her maternity leave. She used to come into the salon before anyone else, change water in vases, and collect the first bouquets for those who would come very soon and want to choose a gift for their loved ones. Elona was loved and considered a talented florist at the salon, but in the fifth month of pregnancy, she had to go on maternity leave to quietly carry her daughter and not carry heavy flowers and vases filled with water. And now, after all this time, she was picking up flowers again. The bride's exquisite bouquet of white roses was folded as if with itself. Elona inhaled their scents, took a few pictures, and without wasting time, posted them to her social media accounts. Oh yeah, I promised to send one to Mary too, Elona remembered. She sent the pictures to her friend. Mary called back right away, overjoyed. I'm going to get married, and you'll be sure to get me a bouquet. Is it going to happen? Mary asked excitedly. I don't want to get too excited or get ahead of myself, but I think Max has something on his mind. He even asked me a couple of times how I feel about marriage. But it's all about me. Tell me how you're doing, Mary shared. The bastard never contacted me again. He texted me once, said I'd forgotten my wet wipes and diapers, offered to pick them up. I told him he could keep them. He sure could use them, Mary laughed out loud. Are you settling in okay? It's fine, I never get tired of thanking you. You're a lifesaver. And I got Lizzie a nice nook in the back room. I still don't know what to do next. I hope they start buying my bouquets, and I can support myself like I used to. You will be able to do that, you're a master. The main thing is not to give up. By the way, come here. We'll walk, swim, sunbathe, and we'll also find you a normal man. I don't think I want any more normal or abnormal ones now. I'm just beginning to realize how much I've given up on myself and become a prisoner of cooking, cleaning, and serving anyone else's needs but my own. You have no idea how wonderful it is to have a croissant and coffee for breakfast and not to think that this monster needs meat and cereal sandwiches. He eats but he doesn't want to cook, so I ran around like an idiot cooking, and he was quick to figure it out and put the money in his account. I didn't tell you, turns out he was getting a lot more than he said. A lot more, and he was saving it all while my maternity money went entirely to the baby and food. But where was he saving it? Was it in my mom's account? Otherwise, all the money would have been split in half. I don't know. They wouldn't tell me where, and I don't want to know. It's an idiotic situation. I can't tell you how mad I am at that Harry. But I learned your lesson too, no signed paper of hope for a brighter future. Alona agreed. I still can't sleep. It's okay. Divorce and separation are painful and unpleasant enough, but when something like this happens. But maybe it's for the best in this case. Can you imagine? I would still be sad for him and suffer, now I just hate him. And yet, it's a strong feeling too, and it hits you. You hate it, and he doesn't care. It's good that you took the job, it'll be easier to take your mind off it. And if I were you, I'd have an affair. You don't have to get married right away or even live together, but you're a young and beautiful woman. Believe me, there will be a lot of offers. So be it. 
all I want to do for now is work. Except that so far, no one writes that wants to buy a bouquet. If they don't, I don't know what I'll do. What's the matter with you? Mary laughed. How long has it been? Half an hour. Go get some tea and exhale. You'll be fine. Alona left too, whether from nerves or from the realization of her own stupidity, and said goodbye to her friend. Lizzie was still asleep. Alona went to the window, which offered a breathtaking view of the city. At that very moment, the sun peeked out from behind a cloud, and Alona smiled. She didn't feel like crying now. Maybe Mary was right, and everything really was still to come. However, no matter how much she wanted to believe in miracles, reality kept coming back. It manifested as an empty fridge and purse, a crying daughter desiring a new toy like the character from the cartoon, and her own reflection in the mirror lacking a good moisturizer. It had been two days since Alona posted a picture of the bouquet, yet no one had placed an order. The good mood that came from the new endeavor was swiftly replaced by disappointment. I guess I'm a useless, dumb idiot. How could I screw up my life so badly? Scolded herself alone. She was frying eggs for breakfast when the phone rang, but she didn't pay attention, assuming it was another spam message or text from Mary. However, she decided to check it a little later. Alona took Lizzie out of her crib, settled her on a chair with some cereal, and sat across from her, consuming the eggs hungrily. Only after finishing the meal did she remember the phone. She turned it on, and a message popped up on the screen, Hi, it's Victor. Remember we went to dinner? I hope you don't mind that I texted you. I just wanted to know how you were. Elona put the phone on the table, stepping away, her heart pounding. I will not answer him, she vowed. I don't want anything. Or do I? Lost in thought, Alona began to wash the dishes. Water always calmed her, but not this time. Suddenly, without even giving herself time to think about what she was doing, Alona grabbed the phone and answered it. Hi, I'm fine. And how are you doing? Immediately, she regretted her action, wanting to delete the message, but it was too late. Victor had read it and was already typing a new message. I'm fine too. I flew to your city the day before yesterday, and while I'm staying here for work, I thought maybe you would like to see me. Maybe you could show me around, and you could take Lizzie with you. Elona didn't answer and called Mary. Her friend didn't pick up the phone right away, and when she did, she sounded tired and out of breath. Hi, I'm on the treadmill. Is everything okay? Elona said, Victor texted me asking me to go for a walk. Yeah, Mary realized and apparently turned off the treadmill. The buzzing in the tube has subsided. I forgot to tell you, what did you forget to tell me? Alona asked sarcastically, already anticipating the response. Mary giggled before explaining. Not long ago, Video was here, and Max and I saw him. Victor asked about you. I told him a little bit without any details. Don't get me wrong, I just told him that you're single now and that your husband was very bad to you. It was like he was upset for you, and he said he was sorry. I mean, you're such a beautiful girl. And that wasn't all. Then when we were breaking up, he asked me if I could call or write you. I said I didn't know how you'd react, but it's always worth a try. He likes you, Elona, even back then, and he doesn't even mind at all that you have a daughter. He said Lizzie was a very nice girl. Don't be mad at me, please. I didn't give him your number, I swear he asked for it. Okay, he asked if I would go out with him. Oh wow, Mary marveled. What did you say? Nothing yet. I don't know. I'd go if I were you. As I said, you don't have to marry him. Do you? Yes, but taking Lizzie with you, it seems strange to me. Well, get a babysitter for a couple of hours. You should definitely get some rest, take a walk, socialize. I know a nanny. I left Lizzie with her when I went to court. She's very cheap. All right. I don't know if she can babysit anymore, 
Corey Mary screamed. Good luck to you, be sure to let me know how it went later. The nanny turned out to be free, and Ilona finally decided to answer Victor. It's okay tonight or tomorrow, not without Lizzie. I've decided to leave her with the nanny. The answer didn't come right away, but when she read it, Alona smiled. I'm glad you agreed. If you can, let me pick you up today at 6. It was a few hours before 6, and Alona was running around the room, going through the children's toys and picking out her outfit. She wanted to look delicate and feminine. Well, the dresses she had left much to be desired and did not fit her figure at all. And then, when all the contents of the closet were thrown on the floor, Alona finally stumbled upon a dress she had forgotten about. Alona immediately tried on the dress and admired herself. She could go in it without worrying about someone looking at her obliquely. By five o'clock, the babysitter arrived, and Alona briefed her about her daughter's new skills. Don't worry, Nanny assured her. We're going to have a great time, won't we Lizzie? Lizzie nodded happily and pulled Nanny to look at the new toys. Finally, Alona had some time to herself. She rushed to the bathroom to do her hair and makeup. She decided to limit herself to a minimum of makeup so as not to look too dressed up, and in a few minutes, she was ready. Victor called and asked if Alona could come out already, saying he was waiting for her downstairs at the front door. Hardly believing it was really happening, Alona kissed her daughter on the cheek and asked her to behave, then hurried downstairs. Victor was standing not far from the door and immediately walked forward upon seeing her. He smiled at her. I'm glad you agreed, he said. Hi. Alona tried to contain her smile, but she couldn't help smiling broadly. Victor looked stunning in a light summer suit, and of course, with flowers. These are for you, he said, handing her the bouquet. Thank you. They are very beautiful. So, where would you like to go? I thought it would be somewhere to sit and eat first, and then, if you want, we can go for a walk. Especially since it's very warm today. That's a good idea. Let's go then. I found a place I hope you like, Victor pointed to a grey car parked outside the house and opened the door. The interior smelled pleasantly of men's perfume. Victor took the driver's seat and turned on the ignition. How are you doing? He asked. Well, I take it Mary told you briefly, Victor reassured her. I'm sorry about that, but I hope you're doing well now. I am. I've calmed down, and I'm starting a new life, Alona replied, glancing at Victor before quickly turning her gaze away to the window. And how are you? Do you have a lot of work? I did not come here for nothing. We are starting a new project, so you're not going to Washington for a while. No, I'll definitely be here for a while. I have to open an office from scratch, get everything up and running. That's great, Alona nodded, not knowing what else to say. For a while, they drove almost silently, discussing only some absolutely insignificant things. But then, Victor stopped the car and smilingly said, well, here we are. He got out and opened the door, holding out his hand. By the way, I did not tell you that you look beautiful. Alona blushed and extended her hand in response. Thank you. I am very glad to hear that. The cafe they entered was cozy and calm. The initial awkwardness of the meeting had faded away. Alona was finally able to talk about her life, albeit without going into too much detail. And now I want to get back to work. It is, of course, not easy at all but I think I can do it somehow. I don't even doubt it, Alona said. Can you show me the pictures of your work? Victor asked. Alona nodded and found the portfolio pages on her phone. Victor flipped through the pictures for a few minutes and then pointed at one bouquet of flowers. We're going to need these. Can we discuss it later so I can place an order? Victor inquired. But, no, Alona flustered. This is an acquaintance, right? Just to be supportive. I certainly want to be supportive, but I wouldn't order anything if I didn't need to. It's just that we want to decorate the Hotel Lodi, 
and these flowers would be perfect for us. Oh, Ilona was surprised. But then I'd just be happy to work. Sure, we'll discuss it later when you're ready. Victor nodded and then ordered a cup of tea from the huge glass kettle. What are your plans for life? What do you dream about in general? Victor asked. Well, in general, I want to open my own salon someday. Now, of course, it's far away, but I hope that someday it will work out. What about you? I've always wanted to travel, but so far, I've only been to three countries. My presence at work is required, and I can't go away for long. But I believe that one day, I'll line up a job so that I can avoid coming into the office every day and go on a big tour. It's very cool, Victor enthused. What kind of vacation do you like? The active one or the one where you just have to lie on the beach? He asked. Well, with a beautiful girl, you can also lie on the beach, Victor winked. But in general, I like the active one, walk around ancient cities, study architecture. Do you know how many houses are preserved, built hundreds of years ago? I'd probably like to see them all. Old houses draw me in. I haven't been much abroad, but I did go to Viborg. Have you been there? No, I haven't, Alona replied. Is there anything to see? There certainly is. For a lover of old houses, there's a castle and some old houses there. By the way, the oldest residential house in the country stands there, Alona found pictures on the internet and showed them to Victor, who was almost excitedly clapping his hands. It looks very interesting. How about going there together if you like Viborg, of course. I like it very much. Except for this, you can't go without Lizzie. It's one thing to leave her with a nanny for a couple of hours. I wouldn't dream of suggesting you leave your daughter at home. What's the matter with you? Victor smiled embarrassedly. Of course, we'll go with her. But if you agree, then I'll do it tomorrow. What's tomorrow? We could do it on Sunday, Elona suggested. It was amazing how easy and relaxed they were with each other now. At first, Alona was afraid to put in an extra word, but now she became quite cheerful and even agreed to the trip, imagining how she would tell Mary about it and how her friend would send her selfies with an astonished and happy face. Alona giggled quietly. What is it? Victor asked. Yes, so I imagined what Mary would say. I think she has already tried very hard to bring us together. I think she was very modest but she put your number in my pocket, Victor laughed. Just kidding, of course. Actually, I asked her to do it myself. After eating their fill, Alona and Victor decided to take a walk along the promenade. A pleasant light breeze was blowing outside, and the sunset was beginning. Victor suddenly took Alona's hand, and she lightly squeezed his fingers, feeling incredibly happy. If someone had told her on that ill-fated day when she returned that she would meet a wonderful man very soon, she certainly would not have believed it. As a gallant cavalier, Victor didn't rush into anything, but Elona had already gained her courage. As he walked her home, she lightly kissed him on the cheek. The way she looked at him, it was impossible to mistake. That look must have given Victor courage and he touched her lips cautiously at first but more and more confidently and boldly with each second. Wow, he whispered. Do you have any idea how Greek you are? Alona blushed and bit her lip. She did not want to say goodbye, but her daughter was waiting for her at home. Promising to write, Victor walked Alona to the door of the apartment and went downstairs. Alona opened the door and went into the room. The nanny came out to meet her. I put her to bed quietly, she said. How did it go? Wonderful. Thank you for your work. The next day, while walking the streets of Viborg, Alona received an order for a bouquet. She had only to believe in the best, and it began to happen as if by itself. Already back home, Alona told Mary about it on the phone, and they both laughed with joy. See? You didn't believe me. But the most important thing is that now you know. Astounding, Alona. That lawyer, Gerard, wrote me today. Remember? 
you won't believe it. I'll tell you if you're ready to hear it. What is it? Well, he was going through the paperwork and found one certificate that said you were entitled to money after all. Gerard contacted Harry and found out something incredible. Turns out, he didn't have any more money. The idiot had it all in the name of his mistress. What do you mean? Elona was surprised. I thought it was for my mother, but it turned out she wasn't. And you imagine, she, of course, left him just like he left you, and she took everything with her. In astonishment and shock, Elona didn't immediately find something to say, but she did. Is that how karma works? Serves him right. Not even a pity. I'm done with it. I wish him luck. Now she knew for sure she was going to be okay. Life was slowly getting better. That, dear friends, is the end of Elona's story. Things are getting better for Elona, and she has no interest in Harry's life now. But what would you say about yourself, dear friends? Would you be able to stop hating the man who deceived you so cruelly and for so long? Please write about it in the comments.